What's the best gun ammo combination for personal defense? I know, it's a worn out topic, but you do want to know, right? You did click on this video. Here we go. If this is your first time here, be sure to subscribe to the DFI channel and click the notification bell to stay current on all the Defensive Firearms Instruction YouTube videos. Stay with me to the end of this video for my recommended principles of choosing your first personal defense handgun. I'm Riley Schrader with Defensive Firearms Instruction. I help new and veteran shooters get and improve their shooting skills by teaching the art, science, and laws of self-defense, whether guns are involved or not. Today we're going to talk about a very worn out topic. What is the best handgun ammo combination for personal defense? However, let me tell you what I'm not going to do. I'm not going to talk about calibers, capacity, whether or not the Navy SEALs approve, you know, the usual never ending flame wars. I will make some of the usual recommendations, so you're not going to hear anything earth shattering new in that regard. But the difference will be in my perspective that goes a couple of layers deep into the overall reasoning, specifically in the support and training categories. What's the best personal gun ammo combination for personal defense? The very first and most likely relevant answer is the one that you have in your hand when you need it. If you're new to the firearms world, you might not have heard this. And if you're new, you will soon notice that there is a fair amount of sarcasm, exaggeration or hyperbole that is used in most discussions about equipment and techniques. I'm going to try to dispense with most of that and give you a different perspective on my recommendations. And that perspective is one of long-term sustainability. That is, sustainability with support equipment, training techniques, and legal defensibility. None of this requires that you take out a loan to afford the most expensive piece of gear. However, what sense does it make to cheap out on the primary piece of equipment that you are acquiring as a life-saving tool. Especially if you have any plans at all about getting proper support gear like holsters, weapons lights, or other aftermarket accessories. Go ahead and buy your third world manufactured pistol and save the hundred dollars, but you're going to spend a ton more than that in your search for a proper fitting holster or a weapons light or weapons light and a holster that will fit the non-mainstream concoction that you have brewed up. If you really shoot your bargain basement gun instead of making it a safe queen, you may find that after a few thousand rounds, it might need some minor maintenance or repair. Unless you're a gunsmith, good luck with finding small parts to make your gun function in a reasonable amount of time. There are reasons that most police departments have a short list of authorized firearms. Those reasons are reliability, ease of maintenance, ease of repair, the ability to easily fit selected aftermarket accessories. Having said that, realize that the vast majority of firearms equipment decisions made by police departments are made by police administrators that have no idea about the tools that are needed for personal defense. You're already ahead of the game because you're seeking out some knowledge on this topic. Your oddball handgun is not going to fit standard duty holsters. It's not even going to fit standard concealment holsters, at least the ones that are made by major manufacturers. If you want to spend your time chasing down custom fitted everything for your non-standard handgun, then have at it. The same holds, holds true for off-brand weapons lights, especially if you think you need to have a laser on your pistol. 
I'll do another video on the pros and cons of lasers on your defensive pistol. But the short version is that you need to spend your money on various forms of improving your decision-making skills instead of hanging gadgets off your firearm. Your gun is a tool. More than anything else, you need to know the if, the when, and the how of using that tool in your defense. The gadgetry will not compensate for poor decision-making or lack of basic skills. Since you're likely not working for some entity that is going to dictate to you what equipment you will use, you do have choices. Generally speaking, those choices will be how the gun fits to your hand and how it simply feels overall. If you like the fit and the feel in the first place, you'll be more likely to spend time practicing with your firearm. That in turn will translate into at least a reasonable amount of comfortability with your gun. Some factors to consider are how the gun fits in your hand. Is it a struggle to reach the trigger? Or does your trigger finger comfortably reach the trigger while you're properly gripping the pistol? New shooters improperly focus on the size and the weight of the gun and don't consider the effects of recoil. Short version, a larger gun has more mass and as a result will be easier to control recoil. Smaller gun, lighter weight with the same cartridge will have more felt recoil, sometimes a lot more. But if concealability is a factor, then a trade-off may be in order. Bigger gun, harder to conceal, but more ability to control recoil. Smaller gun, easier to conceal, but more difficult to control recoil. Generally speaking, it will accelerate your learning curve if you learn the basics on a full-size handgun and then graduate to the smaller handgun. And handguns are not that heavy in the first place. People get wound up with the weight and size factors simply because they're not used to carrying a gun around all day. With a properly fitted holster and a sturdy gun belt, you'll become accustomed to the added weight. Look for my video on living with your gun for some tips on incorporating your firearm into your lifestyle. Let's talk about ammunition for a minute. Depending on who you talk to, defensive ammunition choices are every bit as vigorously discussed as the guns that shoot them. Short version. Mainstream handgun rounds, compared to rifle cartridges, are notoriously inefficient. If you have the time, do go down the rabbit hole of terminal ballistics for your own education. But don't be terribly surprised when you discover that bullet weight, bullet shape, and the chambering don't matter nearly as much as shot placement. The human body can be remarkably resilient to gunshot wounds except in one certain area. Look for my video on terminal ballistics. Now let's talk about training techniques. I can teach you how to run just about any firearm that you want to bring to bear. The thing is, if you have something that is easier for you to shoot, to reload, and to control, your learning curve will be significantly faster. If you're just starting out, make it easy on yourself. Get something that you will be easy for you to learn on. If you decide on a make and model of handgun that is very far out of the norm, you may be handing the naysayers of the uh, legal world talking points that they can use to impeach your intentions. However, if that one-of-a-kind handgun is the one that happens to be in your hand when you need it, don't get too excited about the cosmetics of it all. If you're justified in using deadly force to begin with, your competent attorney will be able to argue away those points. But there's no good reason to make your life more interesting than it will already be if you have a choice. Notice how I haven't specified or even referred to brand X or brand Y. The only caution that I would make to you is to not cheap out on your personal defense firearm. 
get something that's simple, mainstream, and is chambered in a common defense caliber, especially if this is your first fire. You don't need a $2,000 custom gun that a secret squirrel uses. You do need a $500 gun and $1,500 worth of training. Yes, I know you'll watch YouTube videos of successful defense gun usages by a little old lady with a cheap blaster and no training. Again, short version, she got lucky. And yes, sometimes it is better to be lucky than good. But since you, hopefully, want to stack the deck in your favor, why not be good too? And don't take my word for any of this. Do your own research and verify what I've said from other subject matter experts. If you're in the Southern California area and would like to discuss setting up your personal firearms training program, send me an email through my website. The link is in the description. If you like this video and want to learn more about the elements of self-defense law, the larger self-defense puzzle, or watch some of my videos to help you get started on your firearms training, subscribe to the channel, and click the notification bell to stay updated on the latest videos. I'm Riley Schrader. Thanks for watching, and see you next time with Defensive Firearms Instruction.